Hi everybody, welcome to the Anatomy 2 lab room. Now we don't get to actually meet in lab being that this is an online class and it's a real shame because Anatomy 2 lab is all about dissections and microscopes and having a really good time. Uh, but unfortunately, we are online and as a result of that, I want you to have as good a lab experience as is physically possible, being that we're not physically together. So my goal with these videos is going to be to walk you through some of the more important parts of a, an Anatomy 2 lab and give you a good grasp of sort of how things are structured. I just want you to be able to see it firsthand, let me show you, as opposed to just looking at a sheet of paper. So prepare yourselves, we're going to dive into this and see where it takes us. Now, in order to accomplish this task, I've got our lab handouts here. I'm going to be following along with those lab handouts in an attempt to sort of guide you through the more important parts of said handouts. They're kind of prescribed by the college um, and are required for online teaching here. So I'm going to do my best to follow along with those and sort of help you see the more important bits and what's involved. Now the first thing on your lab handout is going to be looking at blood, a, a blood smear I should say, and being able to walk through and see some of the cells there. And I just so happen to have a variety of blood smears. So we are going to pick one and we're going to go and take a look at it. And I always find that when doing blood smears, the messier and nastier it looks, the better it probably is. So let's take a stab at this one, no pun intended. And again, I want you to notice, see if we can find something light in color here. Notice what we're dealing with, all right? What will be done on said blood smear is we'll take this thing, set the slide down, they'll put a drop of blood here, take a cover slip and rake it across the slide and that makes a blood smear like this. Now it's been covered over with a big cover slip at this stage. But to make them, what you do is you put a drop on one side, you put a cover slip on it, and drag it across. That's why it has this strange little line on the side. So this is a good blood smear. Now, let's see what's inside of there. Full disclosure, when setting up a scope to look at blood, the lower power lenses are absolutely useless. Uh, what you're gonna see is it'll be kind of a pink color, still kind of a pink color, and then when you go to a higher power lens, like this 40X, that's when you'll be able to start making out the individual blood cells. Now, ideally, we would have an oil immersion lens on here, and we'd do oil immersion to really be able to see these nicely, uh, but I'm gonna do my best to do this in a simplistic fashion, so we're gonna keep it on standard light microscopy. The things we do to set these up so that you can take a look at them, I tell you. Let's see if we can get this thing organized. Yeah, that's not terrible. That's just a little terrible. Okay, blood cells. Again, imagine all these blood cells. And then... Higher power. Let's see if I can get a little focus going here, folks. Yeah. All right. That's not terrible. So those are all blood cells, and you can see them quite clearly. Let's see if we can get a little zoom action going. All right. Look at that, folks. Now, I am having to look through my camera's lens to be able to make things out. Um, and what I'm trying to tell you is I can't, uh, the individual cells that I'm showing you here, number one, if you can't tell, there's some debris on the slide or on the lenses, I should say, and it's a problem, but the cells that I'm trying to show you here, let's see if that's sharp enough, the cells I'm trying to show you here are, um, about the size of a period on a page to me so I can't actually make out the details of any of these uh, but you can see some white blood cells white blood cell white blood cell and then this is a sea of red blood cells so when we say that the red blood cells are far more numerous I just want you to get a, to get a grasp of that 
all right the red blood cells are vastly more numerous and you should be able to see although again these are very small from my view at this particular moment you should be able to see in there someplace some little bits of cellular debris i'm trying to find some it's just so hard for me to see with this view uh, some little bits of cellular debris little dots in between some of these red blood cells for example and those would be platelets so you can see red blood cells white blood cells and platelets there's a nice white blood cell there's another nice white blood cell i had high hopes of being able to go through and find all the different types for you uh, but <laughs> Uh, now that I see what I'm dealing with in terms of looking through this scope, it's a little more complicated. Alright, I wanted to share with you guys just a little bit. That looks like a basophil, which is hard to find. I was trying to find a few good ones to show you, uh, and my camera is acting crazy. But that's okay. Nice basophil. Just wanted to give you an idea of what we're dealing with. A sea of red blood cells, and then one lonely basophil. All right, there are a few little lymphocytes. There's one on the far right, and one right there in the middle. So you can tell they're lymphocytes. They're very small, so they're as small as the red blood cells are. And uh, they can they have a nucleus. It's pretty obvious. They have a smooth appearance, a granular, and they have just a little bit of cytoplasm around the nucleus. So you can see that that is in fact. A lymphocyte. Then when you're doing a blood smear like this and you're looking around just about everywhere you look you find neutrophils. Neutrophils are just everywhere when you're doing this kind of thing. So I could pan around and literally find you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds for every single basophil. So I'm trying to give you a good view of a nice little neutrophil. Hopefully that works. <laughs> All right, one more little overarching view. This is zoomed out a bit, and I just wanted you to see, look for the white blood cells versus red blood cells. All right, the red blood cells are just everywhere, whereas the white blood cells are quite rare. So vastly more red blood cells than white blood cells, vastly more. And I just wanted to walk you through this real quick because, well, it's quite fa quite fascinating and very important. Our uh, granulocytes, the neutrophils, the eosinophils, and our basophils down here, uh, the reason they have these names tend to be because of the types of dyes that are used to stain them. Like eosin is used to stain eosinophils. Uh, the stain used to stain basophils is a basic stain. They have an affinity, is what it's called, for specific stain types. And again, what you want to look for, the neutrophil is this multi-lobe nucleus. Eosinophils will have like a horseshoe-shaped nucleus, thin in the middle. The thing about eosinophils is that they tend to stain a crazy red color. All right, you can see that here, crazy red color. They tend to be very, very red, eosin's red. And then basophils are much larger than a red blood cell, whereas lymphocytes are about the same size as a red blood cell. And these basophils being much larger, uh, are very darkly pigmented. Again, these are the granulocytes of granulocytes. They are very granular. You, you tend not to be able to see anything within them. There's a the big dark ball, um, and that is a typical basophil. Very rare. Okay, very rare. In terms of the agranulocytes, we've got our lymphocyte here. Again, lymphocytes very small, about the same size as a red blood cell, very small. You tend to be able to make out the nucleus here and then a little bit of cytoplasm around it. And then monocytes, where's my monocyte, is a huge, like a fluffy pillow of a cell, all right? This big old cell, much larger uh, than red blood cells and typically larger than all the rest as well. And they, we like to see a nice little U shape to the nucleus. Not, where's my other one? Not like an eosinophil, okay? Not like an eosinophil. Eosinophil will be thin by comparison. A big, fluffy, U-shaped nucleus. You can see a real one right here in this image. Nice, big monocyte. Again, compared to an eosinophil, uh, which would have that red color, or a lymphocyte, which would be very small by comparison. Yeah. And then again, here we have basophils. Basophils have that very dark color, and they're much larger than their red blood cell cousins. 
All right, the next part of this lab is a nice walkthrough of how to do blood typing. But I feel like you're really missing out if you don't actually do blood typing. So I'm going to show you an approximation of how this is done now. Uh, when you go and have blood taken, they're going to check your blood type and uh, figure out what uh, antigens are present on your red blood cells. Okay, we got little antigens here. Antigens, antigens. Sometimes your blood cells have no antigens, and that would be blood with no antigens. That's type O. Maybe your blood might have some A antigens on it. So this might be covered in A antigens. Uh, so if it's got A antigens, it's going to say that's type A blood. If it's type AB, it will bear both A and B antigens. And then we got our rhesus factor. So maybe it's AB negative, no rhesus factor, or maybe it's AB positive with having rhesus factor. So if the rhesus factor is there, it's positive. If the rhesus factor is not there, it's negative. So again, this blood cell here has both A and B antigens, so it's type AB. If I take this one away, only the B antigen is present. That would be type B blood. Take it all away, again, we're back to type O. So we are going to look at some blood and see if we can't figure out what the blood type is and then have a little bit of a conversation on it. So what I have here is a nice fake blood. I refuse to stab myself for you guys. So we're gonna use some fake blood. I'm gonna crack this thing open. Always good to give a little shake. Crack this thing open. We're gonna put a little bit of blood on every spot. And I'm not doing this exactly right, but it doesn't really matter. For our purposes, this is gonna work just fine. I'm just trying to keep my blood in the middle. <laughs> So what we have here is blood in three little spots. So now what? I've got my blood here. What I have is a material which will test to see if there are type A antigens present on this blood. For our purposes, we're going to pretend these are antibodies. Antibodies which will bind to type A antigens and then cause them to coagulate. Okay, these are agglutinins in the grand scheme. They're gonna to lead to coagulation, uh, eventual destruction. So we're gonna find out if they are present. So we're gonna put a little drop there for type A. And now I've got me a toothpick, and it's gonna give us a little scrub. A little scrub. Whoa, look at it go. You see it clotting up? Look at that. I hope you can see this. Let's let's get in here tight. Can you see what's happened here? That's regular. That is not. That's all clotted up now. That is classic agglutination. That would be a meaning that this has type A blood. Now, let's try type B serum. All right, let's set that down. Type B serum. Crack that open, hit it with a drop of B serum. And now I'm not going to use the same end of the toothpick. We're going to turn that around, use the opposing side because we don't want to cross contaminate. And we're going to give this a scrub. Frankly, I'm hoping nothing happens because I want you to see the difference. Oh, there's nothing going on here, folks. It's perfect. See, I can scrub and scrub and scrub all day long, but there's nothing changing. Now look, look at this, glutinated, all coagulated up, nothing's happened. So this blood is type A, right, it's type A. This would be uh, a negative, so it's type A, type A antigens are present. Now what we, get, what we need to know is if there are rhesus factor antigens or not. So let's find out. I'm going to find myself a nice fresh toothpick. I'm going to pull some anti rhesus serum. Put a hit on there. A little drop. Now let's see if we can follow this together in real time. Maybe. Okay, here we go. 
and there is nothing happening here at all. Good. All right, perfect. So this person here would be type A negative. A negative. All right. If this had agglutinated, that would be a positive phoresis factor. That would be type A positive. But as it sits, A negative. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, let's do another one in real time together, and we'll uh, kind of blazer trail through. So it's a different sample. Put a hit on there, each side. All right. We'll give it a little flavor from each of our serums here. Again, we're pretending that this would contain antibodies. Pretending this contains antibodies. And then let's give it a little scrub and see what happens. All right, looks like we're getting agglutination there, folks. I don't know if you can see it particularly well. Yeah, it's really going. Look at that. So all just bits and pieces in there now. Next, let's do B. And nothing's happening at all. So we'll go to rhesus factor. Oh boy, that's really going. That's going off big time. I, don't, <laughs> I hope you can see this. Like it is clumping up big time big clumps big clumps look at that big clumps so what we have in this particular blood sample is type a positive this is here we have type a negative all right cool so that's how this works, folks. Uh, what we were trying to show here is that we have, uh, on our red blood cells, we have antigens that display, basically for our purposes, self and non-self. So if I had type A positive blood, that would mean that I have type A antigens. These are markers, nothing, not a big deal. And they have rhesus markers, okay, RH factor markers, type A positive, positive for rhesus. Uh, and that would mean that if I were to be given type B blood, that my body would recognize that type B blood as being foreign to me, and my immune system would mount a response to it. I would release antibodies that would bind to that type B blood and mark it for death, leading to coagulation and damage. All right? So that's why we can't put, the, put whatever blood type we want into somebody, because if we pipe in the wrong flavor, your immune system will attack it, and depending upon how much there is there, it can lead to pretty intensive clotting all around the body and thus damage. Uh, there have been people whom have died from this, so it's quite dangerous. All right, and that is how to do blood typing.